In today's A level, standard level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at enzymes and hopefully you'll find this quite straightforward having met a fair amount about them at IGCSE and GCSE. So first of all, what is an enzyme? And we know this from GCSE, that it is a biological catalyst that speeds up the rate of reaction without being used up. So the crucial word here is that they're a catalyst and that's where the speeding up the rate of reaction comes from. As a catalyst, we know that they are unchanged at the end of the reaction. And they work in very small amounts, which is why they're excellent for use in industry. So what are these reactions that we're speeding up? And in biology, we're really talking about metabolism because the definition of metabolism is the chemical reactions which take place in our bodies. It's important to notice that there are two types of metabolic reaction, and these are both anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions. So what do these words mean? Well, in anabolic reactions, it's when large molecules are built up from smaller ones. So for example, it's when you produce proteins from many amino acids. In catabolic reactions, you have the opposite taking place where larger molecules are broken down into smaller ones. Example here could be the breakdown of starch into glucose in the digestive system. Now these metabolic reactions or metabolism, remember in terms of the individual reactions we're looking at, they can either be linear, which means they consist of a chain of steps, or they can be cyclical. And you often find the enzyme catalyzed reactions are cyclical, such as those involved in respiration. In order to understand more how enzymes work, we need to touch on some chemistry, which is to do with what constitutes a successful reaction. So in order for this to occur, first of all, you need two particles or two molecules, and obviously they need to collide. They must bump into each other. And they must do this successfully. So the collision must result in something happening. And this needs to be done through the molecules colliding at the right angle. And also at the right speed or velocity. And only if you've met these various criteria do you actually get a successful collision. Now we know that most reactions are not successful and within industry, within factories, we change many different reaction conditions in order to increase that chance of a successful collision. And so that could be by increasing the temperature. We could change the pH. We could increase the pressure. We could increase the concentration of reactants.
However, there is an alternative and that is adding a catalyst, which you probably met again at IGCSE, GCSE in the harbour process where we added an iron catalyst. However, in lots of reactions, we don't want to add a metal catalyst. We want to add a biological catalyst and this is where enzymes come in. As I've already told you, they are biological catalysts. So looking more closely now at how enzymes work, again, we're gonna start simply looking at our original understanding and then build on that. So we know we have enzymes and these are protein molecules. And within that enzyme is a special binding site, which we call the active site. Now, the thing that an enzyme acts upon is known as the substrate. And you tend to find it has a complementary fit to the enzyme's active site. So that when they collide, you end up with this sort of situation where the substrate has bound to the enzyme's active site. And we call this binding and the molecule form an enzyme substrate complex. Finally, once the enzyme's finished its work, the substrate breaks down to form the product, which could look something like this. So we could have two smaller molecules, for example. And the most important thing to notice here is that that enzyme is unchanged. So if we were to add some letters to this, our enzyme we could describe as being E, our substrate would be S, our enzyme substrate complex would be ES, we'd form P, which is our product, and we'd obviously have E left over our enzyme because it's unchanged. And so we can form this simple equation to show how enzymes work. E plus S, reversible arrow, which means it can go in both directions to form the enzyme substrate complex, which forms eventually the product plus the enzyme. Now, the simple model I've drawn here is the lock and key theory, which just as a key fits in a lock and turns a substrate fits into an enzyme's active site and changes. However, this is too simple and the theory that we now accept is known as the induced fit theory or induced fit hypothesis. So what is the induced fit hypothesis? Well, this states that the enzyme molecule changes shape as the substrate molecule binds to it. And specifically, the active site is the area that we're talking about. And only during this binding of the enzyme and substrate does the active site become truly complementary to the part of the substrate molecule? Hence, it's induced, it's created, but only once they've met. Sorry, someone's doing their gardening as usual. So we can see the theory is very similar to the lock and key theory, but that the enzyme's active site only becomes truly complementary to that substrate once the substrate has bound. So how does the enzyme actually work? Again, dipping into chemistry, where they may have asked you, um, how does a catalyst speed up the rate of reaction? What is its mode of action? And the crucial term here is activation energy. And if we dip back into chemistry, just to show this nice and clearly what we're talking about when we're talking about activation energy, 
we have a graph which has energy and progression of re reaction on the x-axis, I draw a horizontal line to show the energy of the reactant, which in this case I'm going to decide is higher than that of the product, which I'll draw a lower energy. Anyone doing chemistry will remember that that means that it's exothermic. Biologists don't worry about this. But crucially, if I was to draw the activation energy on, it would look like this. So activation energy is from the reactant's energy line to the top of the peak. And that's because activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. So how do enzymes actually work? Well, they lower the activation energy, so they lower the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. In a bit more detail now, we need to look at enzyme specificity. And enzymes are extremely specific. They can only catalyze a very specific type of reaction, which is why there's lots of different enzymes. And this means that the enzyme recognizes a very small group of substrate molecules, or even only a single type of molecule. And this is because the active site on the enzyme has a very precise shape and distinct chemical properties. And that's due to the presence of very particular chemical groups and bonds because that's how a substance gets its properties from its chemistry. So obviously, as we've already said, only substrate molecules that are complementary to the active site will attach and every other substrate will not be able to fit and cannot bind. And in my next video, we'll be looking at the factors which affect enzyme catalyzed reactions. So that will be temperature, pH, and the presence of competitive and non-competitive inhibitors.